Hello again, everybody. Welcome to the Tigers Baseball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Schulte. This episode recorded on Wednesday, November 23rd, 2022. A lot of goings on going on, so let's go ahead and get into it. And uh, we will start with the non-tender deadline. It's come and gone. It uh, passed on Friday. Uh, The big news out of that is that uh, Tyler Alexander and Austin Meadows were offered one-year deals and they accepted those. Uh, the offer that was not accepted, or that was not made, the offers that were not made, I should say, were to Jamer Candelario, Willie Castro, and Harold Castro, which means we no longer have to hear Jim Price say Howard Castro instead of Harold, unless the unless he signs on with another club that comes to visit Comerica Park. Um, the big deal about this is that um, you now have absolutely zero switch hitters uh, in the Detroit Tigers lineup. And we're going to get into a little bit of that uh, coming shortly. Um, There are now 38 men on the 40-man opening, on the 40-man roster, which means they've got two spots. And uh, there's still some free agent signings that they want to make. There's trades that they want to make. There's a Rule 5 draft, um, which will take place on the... I believe it's the 7th of December at the winter meetings in San Diego. It does take place at the winter meetings every year. I just believe it's December the 7th this year. Um, And let's go into, you know, let's just remember, let's review what that is. A player is picked from another squad and a team is offered $100,000 for that player. And that player has to stay on the 40-man roster, has to stay on the active roster um, and stay with the big club the entire year, the next year. If they have to send him down, if they want to send him down to the minors, they have to offer him back to uh, the club that they took him from for fifty thousand dollars. And uh, then, if the club declines that offer, then he goes. He can be designated or not designated for assignment, but he can go to the minors and, and do what he needs to do there. So, um, some Rule Five draft picks of note for the Tigers: Akil Badu, of course. The twenty twenty was in twenty twenty one. Um. Reed Garrett, uh, Victor Reyes, uh, so players like that. Uh, Reed Garrett was a pitcher that Detroit took in 2019 and didn't work out. They ended up offering him back to Texas, and we haven't heard from him since. So that should tell you uh, what happened there. Um, But, uh, yeah, that's going to happen in in December. So there's two spots available there. I suspect that as things trend a little bit, as as trades are made, as as free agent signings are made, some of these players will be uh, designated for assignment. You have to designate somebody for assignment in order to get them off of your 40-man roster. These were just moves that were made to protect pl- potential players from the Rule 5 draft. Um, players like Brendan White, Parker Meadows, um, players of that nature... Now Detroit did have uh, they did they did claim off of waivers a guy by the name of Michael Papierski, who they then turned around and designated for assignment to clear space on the forty man roster. So I don't know why Scott Harris did that, but you know what? Who am I to second guess a guy that that uh, has the has the 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 knowledge that he does? Um, so that's that's what's going on there. Some other players of note that are no longer with the Detroit Tigers. Victor Reyes is gone. Um, Miguel Diaz is gone. Um, So we're not going to see those guys anymore. Um, Andrew Chafin, of course, opted out. We knew that already. Um, So there's there's quite a bit of turnover on this roster, and there's going to still be some more. Um, Because, let's face it, the, the, the Tigers were not good last year, and they're not... Getting, they're not going to be any better without getting rid of some 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 dead weight, and that's what they did last week. Um, as it stands right now, with the way that this roster is constructed, the way the forty man is constructed right now, I can see this team winning seventy one games next year, and here's why. Your starting lineup is going to look something like this. This is as of today. I don't know what's going to happen in the the winter meetings. I don't know what's going to happen between now and 
pitchers and catchers reporting next year. So don't, you know, this is not etched in stone by any means. But as of today, I can see your starting lineup being Riley Green leading off. Javier Baez hitting second. Austin Meadows hitting third. Miguel Cabrera hitting fourth. Eric Haas hitting sixth or fifth. Jonathan Scope hitting sixth. Um, <clears throat> Spencer Torkelson hitting seventh. Ryan Kreidler hitting eighth. And Akil Badu hitting ninth. That's six right handed batters and three left handed batters. And all three of those left handed batters are in your outfield. Green and center. Meadows and right, Badu and left. Of course, Kreidler at third, Baez at short, Scope at second, Torkelson at first. Eric Haas is your starting catcher. Really? Of course, your opening day starter would be um, Eduardo Rodriguez. And here's the thing. Just based on the way that the roster looks, let's look at what your rotation's going to look like next year. Opening day, because we don't know what progress Spencer Turnbull's going to make. We don't know what progress Alex Fiedo is going to make. Kyle Funkhauser is gone, by the way. He went. He was designated for assignment uh, last week as well. So he's no longer with the team because of his shoulder issues. So here's what we got. Eduardo Rodriguez, Matt Manning, Joey Wentz, Garrett Hill, or Bo Brisky. And Tyler Alexander. Now, you could argue that you can bring Garrett Hill and Bo Brisky both in and and have Tyler Alexander in the bullpen, and that's fine. That's acceptable. I can live with that. But we don't know how these guys are going to pan out. And so I'm banking on... Austin Meadows staying healthy. I'm banking on Miguel Cabrera staying healthy. I'm banking on um, a good full season, second season, full first, first full season for Riley Green. I'm banking on Spencer Torkelson playing better. I'm banking on Javi Baez playing like he's in a contract year. I'm banking on Eduardo Rodriguez staying healthy and playing like he's in a contract year. You know, this is a team that used 17 starting pitchers last year and still managed to scratch out 66 wins. And a lot of people are going to be like, "Oh, well if you're going to if you're going to say that, then why don't you why don't you you know, why can't you give them more wins than 71? Because where's the offense going to come from?" And again, this is as of today. For all I know, they're going to go out and sign Wilson Contreras and, and you know, get a, get a right-handed hitting outfielder and, and the offense is going to look better. They can't get Hunter Renfro. He was just traded to the, to the Milwaukee Brewers or to the, to the, uh, he was just traded from the Milwaukee Brewers. So that's not going to happen. He was traded to the Angels. So that ain't going to happen. But there are right-handed options out there. Detroit just needs to go and get one. Now, they're not going to be in the sweepstakes for Aaron Judge or Xander Bogarts or Carlos Correa or Dansby Swanson or Trey Turner. I get that, and I'm not expecting that. Scott Harris has made it a priority that he wants a left-handed hitting infielder and a right-handed hitting outfielder. Because right now, in-house, every single outfielder that they've got is left-handed. That includes Bly Madris, who they signed, who they claimed off of waivers just last week. Again, he's, he's organizational depth. Much like Jermaine Palacios' organiz, uh, organizational depth for uh, the infield. So you're looking at these situations and and you're thinking about all of this and you kind of go, what's the point to watching next year? Because A.J. Hinch gets more out of his players than, than, than most managers do. And so I'll be very interested to see 
how this team performs, especially when you consider what they did last week in hiring three new hitting coaches. They're headed up by Michael Berdar, who was a shortstop at Michigan in 2015 and 2016. Big analytics guy, big biomechanical guy. I'll be interested to see. See, here's the thing with, 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 the, with the new hitting coach, the new hitting coaching staff. Michael Berdar is it's it's a great idea. He's into biomechanics and all of that fun stuff. You need to get certain guys to buy in. And if those guys buy in, then the whole team will buy in. Those guys are Miguel Cabrera, Javi Baez, and Jonathan Scope. If those guys buy in, especially if Cabrera buys in and has success with his with with what Berdar is teaching, everybody else is going to fall into line. And everybody else is going to is going to make adjustments and and we'll see where things go from there. Of course, we already talked about Robin Lund, the uh, former kinesiology professor and the biomechanic. Uh, he's got a degree in biomechanics as well uh, as an assistant pitching coach. This team is really getting into the whole biomechanics and and biosciences side of things as well as the analytics. And I'm kind of it's it, it to me it's a breath of fresh air it really makes me happy because that's what this team needed that's where a lot of other teams are going and have gone and detroit was behind now they're catching up a little bit so we'll see how that goes we're going to see detroit also did a new uh, basically reorganized their medical staff and uh we'll see where that goes because i'm going to be interested to see just how different the injury report looks because of two reasons. Number one, Detroit's focusing more on biomechanics. And number two, you got a full spring training this year. And I really do think the fact that they basically crammed six weeks of spring training into three and a half took its toll on pitchers last year. Not just Detroit's pitchers, mostly Detroit's pitchers because... 17 starters, right? Um, although I do think that Tommy John surgery is something that, the, like, with, with, like with, with Casey Mize having to have Tommy John surgery, I have a suspicion that that was something that was bothering him already and he wasn't able to do anything. Well, I won't say wasn't able to do anything about it. But I suspect that there's been, that that's something that builds up over time and finally just lets go. Let's not forget that back in 2019, after he was drafted uh, with the number one pick in 2018, uh, he was pitching in Double A Erie and had to be shut down because he had some some shoulder inflammation. and And I've got a feeling that 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 there was some some contributing factors before 2022 that that had to do with Casey Mize's Tommy John surgery. Uh, but Alex Fiedo's hip, Kyle Funkhauser's shoulder, uh, Andrew Chafin's groin, um, um, Joey Wentz's shoulder, um, Matt Manning's shoulder, um, Tyler Alexander's elbow, uh, Eduardo Rodriguez. I mean, Eduardo Rodriguez, I don't necessarily think that that was it might have been related to spring training. Obviously, Michael Pineda's was not, some of his injuries were not getting hit in the finger and, 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 and you know, up with a line drive that has nothing to do with spring training. Um, and Michael Pineda's injury prone anyway, so there is that. But ultimately, I think a shortened spring training and a lack of, of focus on the biomechanical side of things really hurt the Tigers last year. And now that we're going to have a full spring training and these guys know now and can talk to Robin Lund and um, Michael Berdar and, and the, the, the people who are involved in that, in that, in the bioscience department, um, they call it sports science uh, in that department over the off season. So they can tell them, this is what we want you to do. This is how we want you to approach things. Um, you know, I think that's going to be huge and, and help the Tigers. 
But I don't see more than 71 games, uh, 71 wins as this roster is constructed now. Now we'll see where things go. Because Detroit, Detroit does have a, a plethora of pitching. They need hitters. They can send some of that pitching to other teams and get what they need. And they can sign some, some mid-level free agents. Now, I read an article in The Athletic about um, the, the Tigers possibly signing a starter um, from the Ross Stripling, Chris Bassett tier of free agents. And, and I could see that. I wouldn't mind it. I just, I just, at some point next year, you're going to have a slightly, you're going to have an overcrowded rotation because Joey Wentz is, is, is based on the way Joey Wentz pitched this fall in the Arizona Fall League, he has earned at least a look in spring training. Okay. Spencer Turnbull was off all last year and he's actually gone. He's actually on a throwing progression now. So he should be ready for spring training. Now, he's not going to know where, it, where it's going when he lets go of it, but he didn't before, so that's not really going to affect him all that much. Um, as a matter of fact, the article in The Athletic that I saw, Cody Stavenhagen was basically saying that the Tigers' rotation right now is Eduardo Rodriguez, Matt Manning, Spencer Turnbull, question mark, question mark. I don't necessarily know... Um, I didn't want to throw Spencer Turnbull in there because I we don't know what his progress is. But at some point, you're going to have Alex Fiedo healthy, Tarek Skubal healthy, Bo Brisky healthy, Joey Wentz healthy, Spencer Turnbull healthy, Eduardo Rodriguez, and Matt Manning. And at you know you're gonna you're gonna to get to the point where somebody's going to need innings, and how do you get them those innings? And so. There's either going to be a a, a, a a shuttle going back and forth from Detroit to Toledo to make sure that guys get innings and 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 you know that 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 the, remember you cannot option a guy more than five times in a year. So there's that. But ultimately, it, it just kind of concerns me as to where the where all of these pitchers are going to pitch because at some point you're going to have to. You're going to have to get these guys innings, and you're going to have to get these guys big league experience because really, in the case of Tarek Skubal, and in the case of Joey Wentz, and in the case of not so much Bo Brisky and Alex Fiedo, but in the case of Skubal and Wentz and Turnbull, what more do they have to prove in the minors? They really don't. Now, Garrett Hill, Joey, uh, Bo Brisky, Alex Fiedo, these guys are, are, are a little bit more are going to need a little bit more seasoning. But those other guys, let's let's be realistic. They don't they don't have anything more to prove down in the minors. So that's going to be a situation to monitor. Uh we're also kind of curious what's going to happen with the catching position because again, we don't know where Jake Rogers is physically. We don't know what he's doing how he's doing in his rehab post Tommy John. So that's going to be a concern. Um, and like I said, lineup versatility is going to be an issue because you had, you had Victor Reyes, Jamer Candelario, Willie Castro, and Tucker Barnhart. You could have theoretically put four switch hitters in a lineup in one day and played all sorts of havoc with, with the matchups that the other team was trying to, trying to create I don't know that AJ Hinch ever did that, but it was at his he had that possibility, he had that luxury. Now he doesn't. You know, the the Tigers are saying they want a left-handed hitting infielder. Right now, the the one that's on their that, that that's at the top of the list is Cody Clemens. He didn't do very well last year. You got to go all the way down to Jace Young if you want to get another left-handed hitting infielder. And he was just at high A West Michigan. So he's far from ready for the, for the big leagues. So that is, that is what's going on um, with the roster situation. We'll get back to that in the, after the winter meetings are over because then we'll be able to find out what's going on with the Rule 5 draft, who got taken, who did Detroit take. 
I want to address something real quick uh, that I was talking to somebody last week who was a Tigers fan here in Windsor, and um, one of the things that they said kind of struck me and, and made me think a little bit. He said, going to the, going to the ballpark, when the, watching the Tigers when they were winning was great because they were winning. Now it's kind of like, where's the hope? We don't have any hope. So why should I watch? And I got to thinking about that. So I started looking in my thought process. I'm like, okay, where would I find hope if I'm a Tigers fan? Hope is Ryan Kreidler. Hope is Riley Green. Hope is, to an extent, Spencer Torkelson. Hope is Jackson Job and Dylan Smith and Dylan Dingler and Josh Crouch. And yes, Jake Rogers. And, and hope is the fact that, let's face it, after 2023, there's, very distinct, there's a very distinct possibility that $70 million worth of payroll is going to be off the books. Because Javi Baez and Eduardo Rodriguez can opt out of their contracts at that point. <clears throat> and Miguel Cabrera's contract is done, and Jonathan Scope's contract is done. Those four players tie up $70 million in payroll. I'll restate that. I'll actually give you the numbers. $10 million for Jonathan Scope. $17 million for Eduardo Rodriguez. We're up to $27 million. $24 million for Javier Baez. All right, now we're up to $51 million. You saw what I did there, didn't you? $32 million for Miguel Cabrera. So $83 million of payroll off the books after 2023. This is assuming now that, that Javier Baez opts out and, and Eduardo Rodriguez opt out. But I think they will because I have a feeling that they, you know, depending on what the Tigers do especially Javier Baez, he does not fit the profile of what somebody like Scott Harris is looking for. He does not dominate the strike zone on the offensive side of the ball. He just doesn't. So, hope is these, these young players and the fact that we will have money to spend after 2023. And I think that's a huge deal. I think that's a, a very, very big deal. Because if, if you think about it, what you can do is you can take the money that you have to spend and you can either, A, lock it up with some of these young players like Riley Green. You can give Riley Green the same type of an extension that Julio Rodriguez got if you want. If Spencer Torkelson has a good year next year, you can look at possibly doing the same thing for him. You can also spend it on some good free agents. And depending on how that young talent is developing, if it develops the way Scott Harris says it's going to, the way he says it wants, he wants it to, you'll have a very talented young core that, that these free agents are going to complement. And that's a big deal. So that's where I find hope. And um, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's where it's at for me. So with that, I will see you guys after the winter meetings. Um, I want to thank Anchor for distributing the podcast. If you are not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you should go there, uh, youtube.com forward slash at TB podcast. And you can subscribe to us, like, rate, and review. Um, tell your friends, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, share it on Mastodon. At TB Podcast, uh, uh, sorry, um, <clears throat> at Podcast Tigers on Twitter. 
You can also email the show Tigers Baseball Podcast at gmail.com. It's the world's longest email address, and I'm proud of that. With that, we will see you guys after the winter meetings, and um, hopefully we will have some better news for you as far as signings and trades and who Detroit drafted in the Rule 5 draft. And um, we're counting down to spring training, folks. Until then, have a great Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening. I'm Chris Schulte. Go Tigers.